Things used to be way simpler, man. When I was a kid, my favorite cartoons didn't have stories. They were goofy comedies where literally anything could happen to the characters and it would all reset back to normal by the next episode. You could straight up explode a man and he'd be back next week and no one would ever talk about it again. But these days, all these cartoons I'm watching have plots and arcs and it's exhausting, man. Why do I spend so much of my time crying at drawings? And one of the biggest offenders of this is Disney's Gravity Falls. And that's because it's like, the best cartoon ever made? Not necessarily my favorite, but one of the most perfectly made cartoon stories I've ever seen. The story this show fits into just 40 episodes blows my mind, and I really just want to talk to someone about it. So, just like I did with Steven Universe, today I want to bring you guys the entire story of Gravity Falls. Asterisk, uh, it's going to be very simplified because this video can't be 45 minutes. But before we get started, if you like what I'm doing on this channel and want to see more, then be sure to head Head down, hit that subscribe button, and ring the ding dang notification bell or whatever to make sure you never miss a new video. And while you're down there, if you look just below the subscribe button, you'll find my YouTube merch shelf where you can pick up some cool Foot of a Ferret t-shirts. My personal favorite is the Brief History logo tee, and you can tell it's my favorite because I wear it in every freaking video I make. So if you want to support the channel, subscribing, turning on notifications, and checking out the merch are all great ways to do it, and I really appreciate it. And with all that said, this is Gravity Falls, the whole story, or whatever I decide to call this video. So, here we go. Gravity Falls is the story of Mabel and Dipper Pines, a pair of twins spending their summer vacation in Gravity Falls, Oregon. Dipper is a nerdy dork geek 12 year old with the voice of a 30 year old man who likes mysteries, conspiracies, and probably watches a lot of Shane Dawson. Mabel is a super cheery 12 year old girl who loves unicorns, rainbows, and probably also watches a lot of Shane Dawson. They live with their sketchy great uncle Stanford Pines who runs a crappy tourist trap in town called the Mystery Shack. Also working at the Mystery Shack is a teenage girl named Wendy and a Seuss named Seuss. The town of Gravity Falls is full of crazy supernatural stuff, like ghosts, minotaurs, mermaids, Wax Larry King, and a lot more. Dipper starts picking up on all these weird happenings and asks Uncle Stan about it, but he's like, <laughs> Leave. So while wandering the woods alone, Dipper discovers a secret compartment in a tree that opens up a hatch in the ground. This, this seems safe. He looks inside the secret grass hatch and finds a dusty musty book with a giant six fingered hand and the number three on it. I see absolutely nothing unusual about this whatsoever. Inside the book are journal entries from an anonymous author detailing tons of the weird things going on in Gravity Falls. And this journal comes in handy as tons of crazy things start happening to the pines. Like, a lot of stuff, man. It's like they built their house on a weirdness magnet or something. For a lot of season one, the show takes on a monster of the week kind of thing. But there is this underlying mystery from episode one. At the end of that episode, we see Stan sneaking through the shack at night. He enters a code on a vending machine that opens up a secret doorway. Ooh. But the plot doesn't really pick back up until we meet Gideon. Gideon is a tiny, small little boy who runs his own tourist trap somehow. He's a local celebrity and he has an amulet that gives him psychic powers. Again, somehow. One day, Dipper, Mabel, and Seuss go to see Gideon's show to scope out the competition, and Gideon falls in love with Mabel in a matter of, like, seconds. But Mabel's like, I have a crush on every boy, but not not you. Mabel sends Dipper to friend zone Gideon, but Gideon's just like, we live in a society, and attacks Dipper with his powers. Mabel shuts that mess down, smashes the amulet, and cuts ties with the toxic marshmallow man. And because Gideon is just so mentally stable, he swears vengeance on the entire Pines family by scheming to steal the mystery shack. And then we find out that <gasps> Gideon has a journal just like Dipper's, but this one has a two on it. That's one less than three! And the plot thickens! <laughs> Some not much happens for a while, and then Gideon returns. This time around, he wants to steal the deed to the mystery shack from Grunkle Stan's safe in the most extra way possible. So he summons this little triangle dude in a bow tie and tall hat named Bill Cipher. You see, Bill's a demon, an ancient interdimensional demon who can enter people's minds. Bill seems to have some kind of history with the pines, but we'll go into that later. Right now, Bill hops into Stan's mind to look for the combination to his safe, but Dipper, Mabel, and Seuss chase after him. To make a long story short, the gang stops Bill from getting the combination, Gideon calls off the deal, and he just blows up the safe 
safe while everyone's busy running around in Stan's head. Yeah, they didn't really think about that part, did they? So, Gideon has the deed now. That's a big deal. He plans to tear down the mystery shack to build Meta Commentary. But it goes deeper than that. See, Gideon's searching for the other journal. He's got number two, he wants number one, and he doesn't actually know that a third one exists. But he does know that once all the journals are together, they can unlock ultimate power or something. We, we don't actually know yet. And he suspects the other journal is somewhere around the mystery shack. Dipper and Mabel tried to stop him, but it only made things worse as Gideon steals Dipper's journal. Plus, with no shack and no job, Stan can't take care of the twins anymore, so they hop on a bus to head back home. But once Gideon realizes he got journal three and not journal one, he assumes Dipper swindled him and is running off with the last journal for himself. Dipper doesn't even know there is more than one journal. So obviously, the only logical thing to do is giant robot! Yeah, he hops in a giant robot Gideon and chases after the twins' bus. This kid's got no chance. Hell, man. He catches Dipper and Mabel. Oh no! But then Dipper bursts into the cockpit of the robot and starts beating up Gideon. Woo! Fighting is cool! But then the robot falls yeah. off a bridge and they all plummet to their doom. Woo! Children dying is cool! <laughs> But then Mabel pulls out a grappling hook that she got in episode one and hasn't appeared again at all until the season finale, and she saves Dipper and herself from dying from both a terrible fall and a giant explosion. Oh, that's cool, I guess. Sorry I wasn't paying attention. But Gideon knows the town loves him, so he starts to pull a fast one once the cops show up. I know you just saw me attack two children with a giant robot, but actually, they're the bad guys. Arrest them now with no evidence necessary. That sounds more like the grandma from Big City Greens, but uh, who can do Thurup Van Orman's voice? Who? But the cops are like, we're totally inept at our job, so okay. But then Stan shows up and proves to everyone that Gideon's a fraud and a creep because he was using hidden cameras to spy on everyone in town to keep up his psychic charade. The town finally turns on Gideon and he's rushed off to jail. The Pines get their home back and everything is back to normal. But then Stan finds out about the journals and is like, that's stupid, you're stupid, I'ma take this, and walks away with Dipper's journal. He goes back through his secret vending machine door or enters some secret lab and he has the other two journals. Okay. He puts the books together, revealing some weird blueprints, gets to work on a giant machine, pulls a lever, a portal opens up, and then season two. And things hit the ground running. Gravity Falls only lasted two seasons after all, so a lot got crammed into these 20 episodes. Let's see how much of it I can get through before my freaking brain explodes. A big chunk of this season is all about Dipper trying to find the author of the journals and get to the bottom of- FBI, open up! Oh crap. It's the feds! Yep, a couple government agents show up having picked up some strange activity from Stan's portal machine. But sketchy Grunkle Stan's just like, what? <laughs> nah. But whatever, the hunt for the author is on. Eventually, the gang finds a clue in a broken laptop taken from one of the author's old labs. A little label that says McGucket Labs. McGucket, also known as Old Man McGucket, is a nutso bonkers prospector guy in Gravity Falls who is like, a weirdly great inventor, but like, he's the author of the journals? Well, McGucket doesn't actually remember anything. That is, until Dipper shows him a page in the journal called The Blind Eye. He freaks out, and it's time to investigate. They all head down to the Gravity Falls Museum of Natural History, where they discover the Society of the Blind Eye, a secret society dedicated to erasing the minds of Gravity Falls citizens anytime they see something freaky or supernatural in town. Which means they do that a lot. They find a log of McGucket's memories, and it turns out this crazy prospect guy used to be a brilliant inventor who worked alongside the man who wrote the journals. But one day he saw something so disturbing that he invented a device to help him forget about it. He started the Society of the Blind Eye and it was his own invention that drove him crazy. But on the bright side, with his memories mostly restored, he gets to work repairing the laptop and what he finds, it ain't pretty. Hey, Mr. Tummy. Hey, Mr. Stan. Okay, no. He discovers that something awful is about to happen to Gravity Falls. Some giant apocalyptic threat happening in the next 24 hours. Which happens to coincide with Stan turning on his giant portal machine under the mystery shack, causing weird shifts in gravity and starting a countdown until it fully activates. And then things really hit the fan. The mystery shack gets raided by a bunch of those government agents and Stan is arrested for suspicious activity, stealing drums of radioactive waste, and creating a suspected doomsday device. Like a giant portal machine that makes gravity go all wacky. 
Uh-oh. Dipper and Mabel try to find evidence to clear Stan's name, but instead they find a newspaper clipping about a car crash that killed Stan Pines, as well as one about this unnamed grifter in town. Huh. So Stan Pines isn't Stan Pines. I mean, he could be literally anyone then. We don't know. Also in that box was the code to the vending machine door. So the gang investigates and finds Stan's crazy lab, his giant machine, and the journals. And at this point, emotions are all over the place. Dipper is furious and is convinced Stan's a criminal who stole all the journals. But Mabel's still trying to give Stan the benefit of the doubt. Whatever's happening, they gotta turn off that machine. But just before they can do it, Stan bursts through the door and tells him to stop. Stop. Just then, gravity goes all nutso again, tossing everyone into separate corners of the lab, except Mabel, who manages to latch onto the deactivation switch. After pleading back and forth in one of the most dramatic things I've seen in a cartoon ever, Mabel decides to trust Stan's word, the countdown reaches zero, and... The machine goes off, the lab's destroyed, but a mysterious figure comes out of the portal. Someone with 12 fingers, and who looks almost exactly like Stan. This is Stan's brother, Stan. Flashback to New Jersey in the 1960s. You have the Pines twins, Stanford and Stanley. Stanford was born with six fingers on each hand and was a freaking genius, and Stanley was... Well, Grunkle Stan. These two were inseparable, but an accident with Stanford's science fair project in high school ruined his chances of getting into a prestigious college and drove a rift between the two of them. Stanley spent years after that peddling crappy scam products that would fail so bad he'd get run out of town, while Stanford freaking blasted through college and began to study scientific anomalies. Moving to a small town in Oregon that was known for its weird happenings and writing all of his findings down in a journal. <laughs> But just studying weird stuff wasn't enough. Stanford wanted to find the source of these anomalies, but kinda reached a dead end in his research and got desperate. So he summoned a mystical being for answers. Bill Cipher. And he was like, hey dude, if you let me invade your mind at will, I'll help you do your homework. And Stanford was like, this... This seems safe. It was Bill's idea to build a portal, so Stanford and his partner, Fiddleford McGucket, got to work. McGucket accidentally got his head stuck in the portal one day and discovered what was really on the other side. He saw some pretty messed up stuff, so he quit, and we know what happened after that. Bill tricked Stanford. He thought he was finally accomplishing his life's work, but he was really helping a demon merge our dimension with his own crazy nightmare one. So Stanford shut the whole thing down and tried to hide all of his work so that no one could ever reactivate the portal. He had to hide the journals. So he called up Stanley and asked him to take a journal and get as far away as possible. But Stanley, who thought his brother was trying to reconnect, was just like, that that's it? He gets super upset and they start fighting. In all the chaos, Stanley accidentally pushes Stanford into the portal and the portal shuts down. Without the other two journals, there's no way to turn it back on. Stanford was stuck in another dimension. So Stanley began a new life in Gravity Falls, turned the house into the mystery shack, and took Stanford's name so that he could support himself and stay in town while he worked to find the journals, reactivate the machine, and save his brother. And on top of all that, he faked a car crash to kill his old self and start fresh. So, yeah, Th this is still a show for 10 year olds on the Disney Channel, right? <laughs> oh crap, uh, back in the present, the government is still after the Pines. But Stanford, or I'm just gonna call him Ford from now on, uses the blind eye mind erasing ray that Dipper kept with him to wipe all their memories and save the day. Hooray! But good lord, we are not done yet. See, when Stan turned on the portal machine, it created a little interdimensional rift that Ford encased in a globe, the most dangerous snow globe ever. If that rift ever broke, it'd give Bill Cipher an open window to slither into our dimension and cause trouble. So yeah, we gotta prepare for that. The Pines managed to bill-proof the shack with some magic junk just in time for the rift to start cracking. I'll just skip the build up and say Bill ended up tricking Mabel into handing over the rift and oops, Butterfingers, now the world's ending. It's weird Mageddon, everybody. The end of the world has never been so quirky. Bill and his gang of kooky demons hop into Gravity Falls and start wreaking havoc, turning people into stone and taking them to this weird pyramid in the sky. But due to the town's law of weirdness magnetism, I wasn't joking earlier, that's a real thing, Bill and his weirdness can't spread further than Gravity Falls. So, you know, 
Silver linings. Back in the apocalypse, Dipper manages to find Wendy and Seuss, and the three of them set off to find Mabel, who's trapped in a giant prison bubble that Bill created. Inside it is literally everything Mabel ever wanted. That way, she'd never want to leave. To make a long story short, she leaves. The gang bust her out and escape back to the mystery shack where they find Grunkle Stan and a bunch of their friends and side characters just hanging out. The bill proofing actually worked. Neat. So the gang meets up with McGucket and decides to turn the house into a freaking giant robot to fight Bill. Yeah, we're back on giant robots. And this also actually works. A fight breaks out between the house robot and the demons and it is so cool. And while Bill's distracted fighting the house, that's a weird sentence, the main gang break into Bill's castle, free Ford and the rest of the people who return to stone and start working on a plan to finally defeat Bill. But before they can really do anything, Bill shows back up up, captures a bunch of their friends, puts Dipper and Mabel in a cage, and demands Ford tell him how to break out of Gravity Falls. But luckily, Dipper and Mabel manage to distract Bill and escape long enough for the stands to come up with a new plan. Ford agrees to give Bill what he wants to save Dipper and Mabel. So, Bill enters Ford's mind and... Wait, that's not Stanford. Oh, Dip! The Stan switched clothes and tricked Bill into going into Stanley Pine's mind instead of Stanford's. And while Bill was inside Stan's head, Ford used the blind eye memory eraser to completely wipe Stan's mind, taking Bill with it. Woo! And with that, Bill is finally gone, the rift into the Nightmare Realm is closed, everyone's freed, and everything is back to normal. Except Stan still lost all his memories. He doesn't even remember his family for about two minutes until it all starts coming back. That didn't last long. And with the world saved and everything back to normal, it's time for summer vacation to end. Stan and Ford team up to go adventuring like they always wanted, Seuss gets put in charge of the mystery shack, and Dipper and Mabel leave Gravity Falls. And that is the entire story of Gravity Falls from beginning to end. Wait, if Bill Cipher was in Grunkle Stan's mind before it was erased, and Stan got all his memories back, wouldn't that mean Bill Cipher could come back too? Eh, who knows. Show's been over for four years, so it probably doesn't matter. Anyway, reality's an illusion, the universe is a hologram, bye gold, bye!